Welcome! Uh, please find some enclosed information about the film. This film is about electrophysiological or arithmological procedures. The purpose of this film is to introduce the main types of catheter ablations and the variants of lead positioning while performing pacing and implanting cardioverter defibrillators. The clinical, anatomical and technical features of the procedures will be demonstrated using anatomical specimens. Catheter ablation of the typical atrial flutter. It is well known that the mechanism of typical atrial flutter is a macroorientated circuit parallel to the tricuspid valve annulus across the zone of the right isthmus. This is located between the ring of the tricuspid valve and the ostium of the inferior caval vein. In order to cure a patient with recurrent typical atrial flutter, it is necessary to provide a bidirectional conduction block across this area. The conduction block is created by successive radio frequency applications using the ablation catheter from the tricuspid valve ring towards the inferior caval vein. Catheter ablation of the atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia, so-called EVNRT. The modern understanding of the catheter ablation of the EVNRT is based upon the elimination of conduction along the slow pathway of the AV node. The slow pathways usually are located between the compact part of the AV node, the coronary sinus ostium, and the tricuspid valve inside the Koch triangle. The Koch triangle is formed by a fibrous ring of the tricuspid valve, the tendon of Tadaro, and the coronary sinus ostium. The fast pathways go to the AV node along the tendon of Tadaro. The ablation catheter is positioned immediately anterior to the coronary sinus ostium along the tricuspid annulus in order to decrease the risk of AV block or damage to the fast pathways. Catheter ablation of the focal atrial tachycardia. Focal atrial tachycardias most often occur along the crista terminalis in the right atrium and from the pulmonary veins region in the left atrium. They can also arise from the coronary sinus, the parahysian region, the appendages or along tricuspid or mitral annulus. If the tachycardia focuses are located too close to the sinus node, there is a risk that it could be damaged. The sinus node is located subepicardially within the terminal groove between the superior caval vein and the right atrium appendage and is between 11 and 25 mm in length. While performing a catheter ablation of the lateral right atrial tachycardia, it is necessary to be aware of the possibility of damage to the right phrenic nerve. This nerve passes along the pericardium, parallel to the superior caval vein, and laterally to the wall of the right atrium. A catheter ablation of the accessory pathways. In most cases, an additional atrioventricular conduction path provides the free wall accessory pathway. Accessory pathways found in the atrioventricular groove are embryonic remnants of the cardiomyocytes between the atria and the ventricles around the ring of the atrioventricular valves. Catheter ablation is performed either from the atrial surface or from the ventricle surface. Catheter ablation of the left accessory pathways is carried out through either a transaortic approach 
o e transeptal. Catheter ablation of the atrial fibrillation. Pulmonary vein isolation is one of the most common methods of the catheter ablation of the atrial fibrillation, which is carried out according to electrophysiological or anatomical criteria. This procedure entails an electrical isolation of the ectopic focuses of the muscular fibers which are located in the ostea of the pulmonary veins. Pulmonary vein circumferential isolation is created by successive radiofrequency applications around one or several veins. Additional ablation lines may be performed to reduce the risk of macro reentrant atrial tachycardias. Modification of the substrate mechanism of the atrial fibrillation is carried out also by additional linear applications, which later result in a reduction of the critical myocardial mass due to a scarring formation. Catheter ablation of the autonomous ganglionic plexuses for vagal denervation of the left atrium may be based on anatomical criteria. There are four main autonomous ganglionic plexuses. Firstly, the left superior. Secondly, the left inferior. Thirdly, the right anterior. And lastly, the right inferior. The radiofrequency application are performed within these regions in order to damage the plexuses. Now we will look at the technique of lead implantation in standard and alternative positions while performing permanent pacing. Implantation of an atrial lead into the right atrium appendage. Traditionally, the atrial lead has been inserted into the distal part of the right atrium appendage between the pectineous muscles. The lid with passive fixation clutches of the pectineus muscles with special horns, provides an active fixation of the lid with a spiral helix. Implantation of the lid into the interatrial septum. Sometimes a lid is implanted into the region of the Bachmann's bundle or is inserted closer to the coronary sinus ostea. The Bachmann's bundle is a group of muscular fibers which represent the main tract of conduction of the impulse from the right atrium to the left atrium. A detailed analysis of the muscular fibers pathways has revealed that the Bachmann's bundle is formed by the fibers from different regions. There are fibers from the sinus node from the anterior surface and partially from the septal surface of the right atrium. For the lid to be properly positioned within the Bachmann's bundle region, it is important to be aware that its main part is located in the anterior superior region of the septal wall of the right atrium and is adjacent to the superior caval vein. Thereafter, while positioning a lid, it is necessary to configure a small curve of the stylet and to position a lid tip in an anterior septal area. For positioning of lid in this area, a special system was developed with a steerable introducer and a thin lid inside. The implantation of a lid into the coronary sinus region is carried out while positioning it in the lower posterior part of the atrial septum. Implantation of a lid into the right ventricle apex. For permanent pacing, a lid is inserted through the tricuspid ring to the apex of the right ventricle. While putting the lid through the tricuspid valve, it can pass between the horde tinea and can hook them together. In such cases, 
it is necessary to delicate and smoothly pull back the lid to release it. If the lid is positioned correctly, it is important to see the appropriate typical curve at the level of the fibrous ring of the tricuspid valve. Implantation of a lid into the interventricular septum. In recent years, more attention has been given to the permanent pacing of the ventricles from the interventricular septum. This is due to the fact that his bundle goes through these areas subendocardially at the level of the junction of the anterior and septal cusps of the tricuspid valve. Thus, the most optimal region of pacing is the interventricular septum within the outflow tract of the right ventricle. The interventricular septum in this region has a flat surface which makes it difficult to secure the lead fixation. An additional curve of the stylet toward to the interventricular septum can make implantation easier and reduce the number of dislocations. The special system with the cerebral introducer and a thin lead inside enables the correct positioning of the lid into the interventricular septum. Implantation of a lid for pacing of the left ventricle. In resynchronization therapy for patients with heart failure and intracardiac dyssynchrony, two ventricle leads are implanted. One of them is implanted into the apex of the right ventricle while the other one is advanced through the coronary sinus into one of the lateral cardiac veins. For this purpose, a special introducer is inserted into the coronary sinus. When the anatomy of the venous system has been observed, the left ventricle lead is passed into the target vein. It should be noted that the anatomy of the cardiac veins is highly variable. In cases when it is not possible to set the endocardial lead into the lateral surface of the left ventricle due to anatomical problems, epicardial or myocardial leads are implanted into the a target muscular area of the left ventricle. The video materials presented here reflect the basic clinical anatomy of the heart and technique of arrhythmological procedures. We hope this film will be useful for arrhythmologists who have started their practice or for people who have an interest in this field.